The Grow My Cleaning Company podcast helps owners of cleaning companies just like you to grow your company and yourself so you can make more money and finally get the time and money freedom that probably got you into this business. Discover how to automate and create systems that allow you to grow like crazy without losing control. If you dig the show and want to show some love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. It really helps. Enjoy the show. All right. Um, questions. One, ways to stay in contact with current clients to prevent them from leaving. Um, all right. They're, they're both. All right. Let me do that one first. So here's the cool thing, guys. There's really only two things that you need to do. Quarterly or sorry, weekly meetings. That has nothing to do with keeping clients. Monthly parties, invite your clients to those bad boys. Quarterly reviews, that'll keep the culture going for your internal. Um, and it's it's half of what you need to do for your external. For your external, um, I would have a standardized contact flow, and I would have it broken down by um, probably zero to two times, well, one to one or two times a week cleans. And for, res- for commercial, I certainly wouldn't take anything less than weekly. Um, so one or two week cleans, probably three to five or three to four times a week cleans, and then five and up kind of A, B, and C clients, if you will, just for, you know what I'm saying? And then I would have um, just a standardized thing. So like five and up, we check their account, you know, pay someone internally to check their account twice a month. We uh, internally, we give them a call monthly and do a site visit quarterly. And then on the B clients, maybe I only have them check internally once a month. I um, call them monthly and only do two side visits a year. And then for the one and two times a week, maybe I only check their account every quarter and I call them every quarter and I never do a side visit. So just a standard that you kind of have somewhere along those lines. And then when you sign up your new clients, you just tell them this is, oh, you're a three time a week. This is the this is the contact schedule. Some of it's internal, like the, the checks that you're gonna have your you're gonna pay your people to do. There's zero action items in them. You can even say you can opt in or out of those feedback. Like if you're like, I would like to know what you came up with, great. We'll share that with you just like an external document, or if they go, I don't care, just do your job, totally fine. But you kind of let them know what's gonna happen. And one of two things will happen, and they're both good. One will be like, I think we need more attention. Okay, that's fine. We can talk about that. 90% of the time they're gonna go, awesome but they're going to go, they've got a system and a process that they're following and I don't have to think about it. So it's almost like, because I trust my wife so much, I never check her phone or do anything creepy like that because I trust her, but she's earned that trust. So when you say I've got a system and a process, they're almost like, I don't have to trust. I don't have to check on him because he's got, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're in, yeah. you're, you're doing it in advance. Right. So and you still have to follow through. You like you can't just say you're going to do it. But eighty percent of the benefit from their perspective will be like, oh, this guy's thought it through, and he's got a plan. And then when you follow the plan, it works great. So the combination of the monthly inviting them to the monthly parties that you do, I would do those internal and external, and telling you know having your kind of ABC breakdown and what the the standardized contact flow is. And then when you do that, a it doesn't bother them because a lot of time and sometimes they'll also go, oh, we're fine. Just give me a call once a year or just email me or like whatever. And then you can be like, great, happy to do it. And then if and when there's a problem, now you have a, a bullet in your gun of, hey, why don't we put you back? I know you opted out of that and that's fine when we're not having problems, but it seems like we're having some issues. Why don't we opt you back into that? Does that make sense? That makes sense. Um I was I created a um like a survey too. Like wrong. Would you rec- no, totally wrong. I'm, just, no. I'm, just, I'm totally busting your job. There's nothing wrong with that. Totally, that was just, it's just Tamara's head snapped up. Like, did Mike just like slam Urban for no reason? She's OP. She's like, it's going to get good. <laughs> nothing wrong with it. Please continue. I just bust your chops. Go ahead. Um, just like a, a survey. Cause I've been finding like, um, for instance, at one of our places, um, they weren't pulling the doors, the magnetic doors back cleaning behind them. So like the janitor said something to us, not the janitor, but the maintenance guy said, you know, she's kind of bitching about you guys not pulling the doors out. So I was just thinking of like something like, is there anything that you would like us to focus more on? Do you see there's some problem areas kind of because I, I don't have contact. So it feels weird because I'm usually in contact with customers, but I signed them up and it's like just to just so I know and things that we could correct before, like. So it's certainly not going to hurt, but I don't think you need that extra layer of pain in the assery. So keep in mind, you're going to be calling and A, all the stuff that we just talked about is going to be happening. You're actually going to be sending your own people to check and they should be giving feedback. When you do the monthly, quarterly calls and or site visits, 
you'll also be having conversation around that. And then, you know, like there's a bunch of software like swept is more for commercial and residential, but where they can communicate. So there should always yeah. be an open channel of here's a problem like with us, the help tickets, right? I don't go to you guys all the time. Like, what are you doing? Are you okay? Kurt? You know, but you can always open. We have, we, we have a flow of we're going okay. to quarterly events and we have weekly meetings, but anytime you have a problem, you can just open a help ticket and be like, I've got a problem. So you, you do want to have some sort of way that they can on a Tuesday where it's right between all the stars aligned perfectly. And you had a problem and that it's, you haven't called recently and there hasn't been a site visit and you just happen to admit like everything they just fall right yeah. through the raindrops. Yeah. You want a reactive way where they can raise their hand and go, I need attention, but in surveys are fine. It's just, the problem is half the clients, I shouldn't say half, some portion of your clients are going to feel like it's a pain in their ass. Um, the other half often aren't going to be honest because it's a survey. So, yeah. um, I, I think the 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 contact schedule that we just laid out will be plenty. I think a survey would be overkill. It's not. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with it if you're in and nope. you get results. God bless. But scrapping start with that the shit. Yeah, start Scrapped. with the foundation. The monthly meetings. The, the the here's our communication flow by standard. You can opt out of it if or down. Like don't bother me. It's fine. Um, and then obviously you want some way they can help ticket swept slack some way if there's a problem they can ping you that that and you invite them to the monthly meetings the parties you're bulletproof man that is a better system and more thought out and more time and hopefully you get it it's all scalable what i don't want is you guys to be like i gotta be holding my hand and doing you know i want you guys to be able to do whatever you want and that by the way once you get larger i would pay someone else to do that i wouldn't be the guy doing any of those things i'd pay a customer happiness manager some very small salary, like 500 or a thousand bucks a month, plus a little bonus or something if turnover is low or they got good, good reviews or something like that. But that yeah. is, that's a very part-time job. Okay. Cool. And then maybe you even, you know, one of the things is like you got ABC clients and then there's a plus. So it's like not only five days a week and above, but you're more than a hundred grand a year in revenue. I'd now do that. So the customer, pro, you know, so you can also be like the customer service manager handles my A, B and C, a plus any six figure clients. So that would be Irvin and those, to me, that would be worth it, right? If it's a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, yeah, I'll go down. I'll make sure that guy feels loved. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Cool. Let's totally. Say question number two. Uh, we're growing fast and I'm worried about keeping up with the workflow. Should I slow down client intake to have enough workers? Oh, such a good question. Um, this is not busting your chops. No. So always, 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 we want... You will drive yourself crazy, kill your growth. And again, the worst part is driving yourself crazy. All of you guys, not just Irvin, trying to dial in employees. Oh, and then customers. Oh, and like, don't. We just want both funnels full bore. So we always want more customers wanting in that we can take. And we always want more employees wanting in that we can hire. Okay. It's always easy to go. I'm sorry. Like, again, and people are like, oh my God, I could, I, that would be terrible. What if I have a, a lead and, and I can't take them? That's like the nightclub going, there's a line out front, work capacity, and there's a line all around the building. Is that bad for the nightclub? It's fantastic. Mm. We have that. We're like, oh my God, I can't have somebody waiting outside. It's like, you want to, you want to line up. Like, I'm sorry, man. We just have so many freaking, um, people. and I'll call you in a month, you know, if, if you obviously get your pain solved and get taken care of, but yeah. they'll deal with this in a month. I can put you on our waiting list. Okay. Uh, that's a, that's a real powerful place to be as opposed to, oh my God, please I'll do anything. Hey, amazing people, you may have noticed we don't sell a dadgum thing on this podcast. We don't allow ads. The only ask I can ever have of you guys is if you dig the show for you to spread the word and share so we can change as many lives as possible. Literally, it'll take you five seconds to give us a great review. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate you as a listener and value the gift of your kind words. Now back to the show. All right, question. Do you have strong groups of uh, beliefs around? Oh, it's tied in. Strong beliefs about groups such as BNI or just being present in the community, going to grow my business, benefit me financially. I go to a lot of events with business owners that are certainly perfect prospects. And this year, I'm focused on closely on how I spend my time. I keep turning BNI invites down, but I'm starting to think I should try hard to make these work. Really good question, Danny. And it ties in perfect, uh, perfectly to what we're talking about. The mistakes that I see people make on those BNI groups. Mm -hmm. And I would put podcasts in the same category is they don't have a reasonable expectation of how it's going to play out and they give up right before they win. So can you go to a BNI group 
first of all, make sure it's the right group. So a lot of people do like chamber meetings. Like when I was young, I'd be like chamber or rotary. Like I was so desperate. I went everywhere, mm -hmm. but I wasn't really clear on who my perfect prospect is. And I wasn't, I didn't demand that those groups were chock full of my perfect prospect. So even if, and you have to make sure when I say perfect prospect, I mean the human being, not the company. So let's say you okay. joined the chamber and the Blue Cross Blue Shield or whatever big health thing or hospital was there. But the guy that was there was in sales, not, he had nothing to do with facilities management. That sure. is not my perfect prospect. Like he may not even know the dude that's my perfect prospect. So when I say perfect prospect, I'm not talking about business. So if you look at the businesses, you're like, oh, these are all my, I would like to have all of these. Like, who's the guy, right? Because you don't meet Blue Cross Blue Shield. You meet right. Daniel Humphrey. And if she's right. not the right gal, then what the hell am I doing? Like, like she's a lovely pe person, but like, let's go. Yeah. So A, make sure that it is chock full of the right human beings. That's most people okay. miss that. They're just like, it's a B and I, they're full of business owners, but the business owners are like insurance agents that have a little 800 square foot strip mall thing that you wouldn't even take because it's below your minimum. Like, right. Okay. So step this for everybody, not just Danielle. Be specific about, is the human being I need going to be in the room? Okay. Two, do not expect to get any results today. That's the biggest killer. They go for, they sign up. Usually it's for like a year. I don't know how long they have you commit. Um, you go to the first two or three meetings and it's uncomfortable or sucks. And then, oh, I should, I got busy that week. And then you kind of go sporadically for a couple months and then nothing happens and you quit. Almost guaranteed, unless you get super lucky that that will be your experience. Um, there's two mistakes people make and they're the same and the solution is the same. So they don't go, they go sporadically and they don't get results immediately. So they quit and they join a bunch of them and they get spread too thin. So okay. it's like oh, another freaking whatever meeting. Mm -hmm. I would do the opposite. Pick the one. They're like, I'm going to be all in on this thing. Like if the doors are open, Danielle is in the house. I am, they got a freaking, someone needs to be there early to set up chairs and they call it the, you know, it's the, you know, on the, the board I'm on, you know, I'm on the event committee, which just means like buying, you know, <laughs> going to Costco and buying crap and bringing it. That's Danny's your girl. Anytime where everybody can know you. And you're like, like when I was uh, in, I've, I've been on the board of some organizations, the chair, that's the visibility spot. So I want to, okay. if I'm going to end the board is a huge pain in the ass. You don't get paid. Yeah. It's just a bunch of free work, but if it's the chock full of the right people and there's a couple hundred of them, now you're like, oh, that's Danielle. She's the she's the membership chair of my group that's important to me, like my mom's group or whatever it is, or my business owners or my lady entrepreneurs, which would be perfect. Um, so don't join a bunch of them and half asset because you'll it doesn't matter that your name's on the membership thing or you're getting 400 bucks a year or whatever it is to sign up. It's everybody knowing you. And the only way you can do that is reps. And okay. You're going to put a bunch of time in at the beginning for no money. And then nine months in, they'll all know you and love you. And it, it'll be shocking how much work you get. So it kind of hockey sticks from nothing. And this is whatever. Same with the podcast. No one's listening. No one cares. And all of a sudden you're like, holy shit, I got a whole thing here. So okay. if you want to make money in the next six months, don't waste your time. If you're like, I just want to spend 500 bucks a year, whatever their fee is, have my name in the thing and show up three or four times to certain events. Don't waste your time or money. If you're like, I'm going to be in this thing every day, all day, or not every, but whatever meetings I have, I'm on the board, I'm freaking there. And I'm going to commit to do that for a year. And I'm not going to make any money for the first six months, but I want to get paid in six months or a year. Then I think that would be an effective choice. That okay. probably a more in-depth answer than you were looking for, but does that help? No, that's really good. And that makes me like, um, that answers like part of what I was kind of thinking too. Cause like, I, I already feel like a little bit spread thin. Like, um, I, I am a chair of a committee for, um, we put on like, um, events to, to pick up litter a couple of times a year, um, for keep I'm on a committee to litter amongst our town. We should get together. We could cancel each other out. We just throw <laughs> throwing garbage out the window. So. <laughs> so like, I do like already have like a lot of involvement. So like, I don't want to like spread myself too thin and then like do both things poorly. <laughs> For sure. So I'll definitely dig deep before I, they just like, I keep getting invitations to the same BNI group from like five different people. And it's like, Hey, can you make it now? Well, who are those people? Are they people that you're like, I would love to do business with you and you're a decision maker of that. Or are they just friends that have nothing to do with growing your business? Um, some of them, it would be others. It's just like, um, so like one is a realtor. When we did do one-time cleans, we did like a lot of stuff for her clients. And that's actually who referred me to the job I got today. Um, 
And then the other one's like um like an investment advisor. Like it's probably like a one man office, you know what I mean? Well, and and, network network matters. So yeah. like, let's say it's a CPA who works from home. Well, I'm not gonna clean his deal. Right. But who are his customers? Oh, they're just right. all little customers that have no offices. Well, I don't want that either. Oh no, they're he only works with healthcare providers that have Okay. 20 employees are like, hold on, let's <laughs> wait a second. Yeah. Cause that's who he'd be referring someone to. Right. right. So, so they okay. don't have to be, a, uh, they can, they can be a strategic partner or a perfect right. prospect. They just can't be, I'm not a perfect prospect. And I don't know any of your, or I know very few of your perfect prospects. Okay. The other one is definitely somebody who's like trying to work with me. Um, and her, um, like target is kind of similar. Um, like, facilities managers and stuff she has events where she invites a bunch of facility managers and she invited me to like speak at one about like that disinfecting sounds. and stuff so like i feel like i'm trying to like participate in stuff with her as much as i can <laughs> so that i like um oh and one other quick thing you yeah. gotta prioritize separate and prioritize personal versus professional so okay we do a lot of stuff for church and typically we're volunteering having a bible study or helping with the kids obviously that's i Maybe I've gotten, I don't know, I can't, I don't know if I've ever gotten a client here from that, but that's not why I do that. Sure. Um, so you just got, and I'm not saying one's more, and by the way, some stuff can be more or less important. Um, wait a sec, tomorrow's talking crap. I've got to hop off at 12. Are you, you have a question? No. Okay, cool. Oh, you do. God bless it. All right. Let me, uh, and chat me at the beginning, by the way, if any of you guys are like, I got to leave at a certain time and I need to be earlier. I will put you earlier. You are next now. Uh, tomorrow okay um crap what the heck are we talking about um oh so separate personal from professional and depending on where you are in your life i you, it's okay to emphasize one more than another so for me right now just because we're so good at the paid traffic and we don't really need referrals i don't do anything professionally for that um but there's other times where i was and don't judge yourself, right? If you're like, oh, I should be doing more for my church or my community or my whatever you is important to you. If you, it's been 10 years and you haven't, yeah, you need to have a conversation about what's important to yourself. But if for a year or two, you're intentionally like, I need to focus here. And that means I'm not, because I agree, I would do one thing well, as opposed to two things poorly and, you know, go with your own spiritual beliefs. But I believe it's okay to, you know, if I'm constantly telling my wife, it, I know I work eight hours a week, but it'll be different next year and eight years in. Well, now I'm full of crap, but if I tell her, hey, for this next six months, I really want to focus on this. I'm going to be a little distracted. Are you okay with that? And she says, yes. And then six months later, I reverse and spend more time with them and take forever. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. be okay with focusing one place or another, as long as you do it intentionally and, and your hubby's on board. <laughs> Don't beat yourself up for that. Okay. Sounds good. Cool. Good to go? Yeah. Thank you. Well, here we are at the end of the podcast and you made it. Great job. Uh, I've got a little bonus for you before for sticking through with me. But like I mentioned before, if you got value out of this podcast and you want to show a little love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever the heck you're listening to this thing, share it with a friend, share the love. And as a special thank you for those of you that stuck with me to the end, how about I give you my personal phone number so we can text? It's a great way for me to get to know you, your business, your goals personally. So shoot me a text now, 602-932-6431, 602-932-6431. I am the only one who responds to these texts, and I will personally respond to everyone I possibly can, as long as uh, this number is manned. I uh, don't know how long we're going to keep this at the end of the podcast, so grab it now. 602-932-6431. Give me a text. Say hey. Can't wait to meet you.